Hello there. Welcome to the second lecture in the series of lectures on RPDs. Today we're going to be talking about the Kennedy Classification System. So what is the Kennedy Classification? It is a system of classification of RPD cases that facilitates communication between dentists and dentist and lab technicians and lab technicians and each other on cases pertaining to RPDs. Class 1 got two edentulous areas posterior to the remaining teeth, and they are unbounded, so there are no teeth in the back, only teeth in the front. Then class 2 has only a unilateral area with no teeth in the back, so only one side, left or right, has no teeth in the back and only teeth in the front. Class 3 is a unilateral, again, just like class 2, unilateral area, only this time it has teeth on both sides, so it is a bounded edentulous area on one side of the arch. Class 4 is an edentulous area that is anterior to the remaining teeth and crosses the midline, and that's important. Now, of course, we can't keep it that simple. We've got to put some more rules in there, and that is Applegate's rules. Applegate's rules indicate that the most posterior edentulous area determines the Kennedy classification. So say you got a case in front of you and you need to try and classify it. The best way I found to do this is to approach every case by scanning or looking at it from the posterior aspect to the anterior. And the first areas that you see are the ones that contribute to the name of the classification. So for example, in this case right here, this blue rectangle you see here in front of you is your field of view. As we move from posterior to anterior, we meet two spaces. They are bilateral with no teeth in the back and only teeth in the front. So we're going to classify this as a class one RPD. Let's change it up. Here we have, again, beginning from the posterior aspect, moving forward, we encounter just one space on one side with no teeth in the back. On the other side, has teeth and is dentate. So this will be classified as a class two. All right, again, first space we see is bounded by teeth on both sides. So that is what we call a unilateral, because it's on one side, bounded edentulous span. That is a class three. For this one, we're moving again from the posterior aspect of the case all the way to the front. We see one anterior space that is anterior to the teeth that crosses the midline. So this will be classified as a class four. We're going to add something called modification spaces. Modification spaces are any spaces other than the ones determining the classification. So, in other words, the Kennedy classification is the most posterior space, and modification spaces are spaces that are anterior to the Kennedy classification space. So, let's try to do this. Again, the blue rectangle is our field of vision, and we are moving from the posterior aspect of this case to the anterior. Let's start moving. Oh, stop right there. We see two spaces, so that's bilateral, with no teeth in the back. So this will be classified as a class one, but we're gonna continue moving. Oh, an additional space. So this is one space, that is anterior to the spaces that originally named this case a class one. So we will call this a class one mod one. The most posterior spaces are the ones that determine that this is a class one, and then the space in front of it is the one that determined that it is a mod one. So you'll say that this is a Kennedy class one mod one case. Looking at this case from the posterior aspect to the anterior, we move forward. We see a unilateral space right here. 
on the other side there's a molar so that's a space only on one side that is not bounded by teeth in the back so for now this will be called a class 2 as we move forward we see a space right here so that would be modification one move forward and we've got two more spaces so modification two and three so this will be called a class two mod three let's look at this one again starting from the back we move forward now we see two spaces around the same level that are both bounded with teeth boy what do we call this one now we do not have a classification for a bilateral bounded area so we're going to have to call one of them the modification and it really does not matter which one you choose because right now at this current position this would be called a class 3 mod 1 because one of those is the classification the other one is the modification if you flip those around well this will still be called a class 3 mod 1 so it really doesn't matter which one you choose to be the classification and which one you choose to be the modification. Either way, this is a class three mod one. Now, let's keep moving. We now have modification two and one more space. So that is a modification three. There we go. Simple enough. Yeah. Well, let's complicate it a little bit. There are more Apple Gates rules. Is that clear? Probably not. So let's simplify it. Ah, that's better. So missing second or third molars that are not going to be restored. We just act as if they were not even there. Teeth that are going to be extracted in the future act as they have been extracted already. All right, so in cases where the second and third molars are not to be replaced, the starting point is just moved anterior to the spaces that we are not restoring. So for example, in this case, we are not restoring these. So we are just going to start right here. Everything back there is just non-existent. So our field of view starts here. From that point, we can move forward and here we see a space and a modification or vice versa and we move forward here is a space so that is class three mod two all right let's move on to the next one let's take a look at this one here we've got a case where 17 and 18 will not be replaced so we're just going to cover that up here and in that case we are starting right here where we are detecting a unilateral edentulous space. So that is a class two. And we move forward, we see space, that's a modification. And we see another space, so that's class two, mod two. Now let's take a look at the last Applegate rule. And that is when number 18 is going to be extracted and will be replaced. So number 18 is here now. However, we know that it's going to be extracted so what we need to do before we start looking from back to front is to imagine that this tooth is already extracted like that so now when we move forward we're only seeing one big edentulous span on one side that is not bounded at the, at the back so that is a class two and then we move forward we see another space it's mod one another space it's mod two and finally, another space, that's mod three. All right, that's great. Now let's test ourselves a little bit. This one here, starting from the back, we'll move forward. We'll see one space, so that would be a class three. And then another space in the front, and that would be mod one. This one, again, starting from the back, bilaterally dentulous spaces, class one and then one space in the front that's mod one here we're starting at the back moving forward we see one space in the front that's anterior to the existing teeth and crosses the midlines yep that's right you guessed it class four and back here again starting from the back moving forward a unilateral edentulous space that is unbounded in the end 
that would be our class two. And then we'll move forward, we see another space, and that's our modification one. Finally, simpler one, moving from the back to the front, we only see a bilaterally dentula space, which is a class one. All right, I hope you guys understand the candidate classification a little bit better now. We'll see you next time for our next RPD video.